I hope you guys are doing well today. Um, this is going to uh, pick up with our chapter on fish as far as our notes go. Um, we spent the last video discussing uh, pretty much the uh, body layout of a bony fish and we uh, talked about the idea that there are two main types of fish, bony fish versus cartilaginous fish. Uh, today, this video is going to cover the internal systems and the organs of a bony fish. Uh, this day's notes is almost two days worth of notes. It's not quite two full days worth of notes. Um, so you'll get this video uploaded and then probably another video in, in a uh, day or two uh, to finish out this chapter. Uh, and the next section notes will deal with cartilaginous fish. But for today, we're going to look at the internal systems and organs of the bony fish. So first system we're going to look at is the respiratory system. Now, if you remember in the last video, I said that uh, fish are different from other vertebrates in that in place of lungs, they have gills. So gills are special organs that allow oxygen and carbon dioxide to pass between the water and the fish's blood. Now, they're actually made up of curved cartilage of curved arches of cartilage okay and these arches are known as the gill arch uh, these branch into two rows of long narrow gill filaments what these do is they allow the fish to extract up to 80 percent of the oxygen from the water surrounding them so as a fish swims through the water what it does is it pulls the oxygen out of the water around it it doesn't have to go up to the surface to breathe Okay. The gills allow it to actually pull oxygen out of the water as it swims. Gill rakers. Now, think of gill rakers as like a protective grill around the gills. Okay. Uh, what these do is they're projections at the front of each gill arch that strain food particles and other debris from the water that the fish breathes in. So gill rakers help basically clean, uh, clean the air, quote unquote for the fish, that way they are taking in uh, only the oxygen and they're not getting maybe food that they had for lunch that day caught in their gills or debris from uh, anything else really, another fish or uh, man's man-made wreckage, maybe from a uh, sunken treasure ship or something like that, I don't know, maybe a pirate sunken ship and a fish swam through it and in order to keep the uh, boat particles from getting caught in the, uh, the gills of the fish, these gill rakers come into play and they help keep the fish healthy. They help protect the gills. They help them from getting punctured. Uh, that way they wouldn't be able to function or anything like that. So think of them, like I said, like the protection for the gill. Uh, the operculum. This is a large wide plate of bone that protects the gills. So the operculum is even more frontline protection, okay? Uh, the front is attached to the skull and the back swings open to let the water in. Uh, if you've ever noticed a fish when they are swimming or even um, just sitting there, you'll notice that by their head, there's like these flaps opening and closing, opening and closing, right? So those flaps are the operculum. Okay, and the operculum, they swing open to let water in. When they let water in, those gill rakers come into, come into effect and help clean out the water that's being let in. And then they swing shut so that water is only let in uh, at a set time. That way the amount of water doesn't overwhelm the gills. All right. When stationary, fish open their mouths to breathe. When they are moving, they flap their gill covers to breathe. So there you go, just like I said a minute ago. Circulatory system. Sorry, trying to keep my mouth from drying out. With all these videos that we've been doing, my mouth gets so dry and I have to keep up on top of everything. So. Circulatory system, uh, it is composed of the heart, like uh, any other animal circulatory system would be, and it also has the arteries, veins, and capillaries. We talked at length about how those function uh, when we discussed the human body, all right? Uh, and they carry the same basic function for animals as well. So fish have a two-chambered heart, 
that consists of one atrium and one ventricle. We've talked about animals that have four chambered hearts. We've talked about animals that have three chambered hearts. Uh, we talked about how humans have a four chambered heart, but fish have a two chambered heart, okay? And it only has one atrium and one ventricle. Now, the ventral aorta is the major artery found in the fish. It divides into eight branches that supply each gill with blood flow. Uh, if we, uh, when, I shouldn't say if, when we get to come back to school. Oh, excuse me. Uh, we will be doing a fish dissection and you'll be able to actually, uh, we are gonna cut the heart out and you'll be able to see all of these uh, branches of the ventral aorta and where they would send blood to in the fish body. All right. Um, from the gills, the blood flows into the head, brain, and other organs and muscles. So um, what happens is with a fish, the blood is sent to the upper half of the body. Okay, so it's sent out into the head, into the gills, the head, the brain, and then it circles out all the way into the tail and circles back into the heart where it continues that cycle. All right, for animals that have a four-chambered heart, um, the blood is sent both directions. It's sent to the head and out to the bottom portion of the body. But with a fish, it's actually sent out into the head, circles into the bottom portion, and comes back to the heart, all right? It doesn't get pushed out in both directions at the same time. The digestive and excretory systems. So we're going to look at the digestive system first. All right, most fish have their mouth, pharynx, esophagus, and stomach in a straight line. All right, so it's all just a straight shot. Once food enters the mouth, straight shot down into the stomach, okay? It doesn't get stopped along the way by anything else. Like when we talked about birds, we talked about how um, it gets stopped by the gizzard or the crop, but uh, with a fish, straight, straight shot to the stomach. Nothing stops the food, okay? Uh, this allows them to swallow their prey whole, okay? Um, if you remember when we talked in the last video, uh, fish don't have teeth uh, to chew their prey. They have some, some, ugh, some have teeth at the back of their throats to hold their prey so that they can swallow them whole. The prey can't swim out of the mouth, okay? So food is mainly digested in the stomach, okay? In some other animals, food is mainly digested in the small intestine or in the large intestine. With a fish, main, the main portion of digestion takes place in the stomach. And then fish only have one intestine, which finishes the digesting of the food before it absorbs the nutrients from the food. So the stomach is where most of the digestion happens. It gets sent into the intestine, a little bit more digestion occurs. Nutrients are pulled out in this area, okay? Nutrient absorption happens in the intestines, so then that nu the nutrients can be absorbed into the bloodstream from the intestines. Um, and anything that remains is sent to the excretory system, okay? So after absorption, the remaining food is excreted out of the body in the form of liquid or solid wastes. The nervous system. Uh, the brain, we're going to look at that first. Now, uh, the brain of a fish has uh, the same main parts that uh, any other animal brain would, cerebrum, cerebellum, and um, medulla oblongata. But the cerebellum, I'm sorry, not brain stem, not medulla oblongata, brain stem, where the medulla oblongata is found. My bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, the cerebellum coordinates the fish's voluntary muscles, so what the fish has to think about doing. Um, if it wants to swim right or left, if it wants to go angle up or down, okay? The cerebellum coordinates all of those movements for the fish. And then you have the medulla oblongata, which controls the uh, autonomic nervous system and all of its functions. So the medulla oblongata controls its heartbeat, its breathing, um, the brain functioning even, okay? And that's found here. The senses of a fish. Um, the lateral line is probably the main, uh, the main sensory organ of a fish that sets them apart from other animals, okay? Uh, the lateral line, this is a system of special nerve endings that extend over the head and sides of the body. 
Okay, so these nerve endings pick up low frequency vibrations which alert to prey or predator and allow navigation within a school. So this lateral line, think of it like a net, okay? Think of it like a, a nerve net that extends over the fish's body, okay? Inside the fish body, there's this nerve net that extends over the length of the body. And this uh, nerve net, quote unquote nerve net, what it does is it picks up frequency vibrations in the water. So a fish can be able to tell, is there another fish next to it? Is this fish coming towards me because it wants to eat me? Or is this fish, you know, swimming with me in a school? Is, uh, what it, it also does is it helps them from bumping into other fish in a school, okay? You know how sometimes um, when you're walking, you can tell that somebody's there so you know not to go right or left too quickly because you can like sense that somebody's there. Um, that's what the lateral line does for a fish. Uh, the sense of smell in a fish is excellent. It is one of their uh, strongest senses, actually. The reproductive system. Now, the reproductive organs are found in the rear portion of the fish. The urogenital opening is located to the rear of the anus and it releases the sex cells. Now, eggs are fertilized by external fertilization. So what happens is a female will release the eggs, she'll lay the eggs out of her urogenital opening, and then the male fish will swim over those eggs and will release the sperm onto the eggs to fertilize them out of his urogenital opening. All right, most female fish swell at the sides when they are ready to lay their eggs. Um, I don't know if the fish that we will dissect will have eggs in them or not, but we have, uh, in the past, I've had classes dissect fish and the, the, we have found some female fish that are bigger, they're more swollen, because they actually have eggs inside of them. It's kind of cool to see the eggs. Um, so, spawn is when a fish are ready to, uh, sorry, when fish are ready to lay eggs. Uh, fish have a spawning season, okay? Just like um, birds have a mating season, fish have a spawning season as well. And it's different for each species of fish. Um, it's never, uh, you can't just root spawning season as a whole for fish. Some fish spawn in the winter, some fish spawn, some fish, excuse me, spawn in the spring, all right? So it's just, it just depends on the species of fish that you're dealing with, depends on when they are going to spawn. Uh, the roe, these are fish eggs, okay? That's just the term that we give to fish eggs. And a fry is a young fish. Some special organs that you will only find in a fish, all right? And that's why we call them special organs because you won't find these in other vertebrates, okay? So you have the swim bladder. This is a hollow gas-filled chamber that allows a fish to adjust its buoyancy so it can remain stationary at a fixed depth without treading water. Now, not all fish have a swim bladder. There are certain fish that you can find the swim bladder in. Uh, most of those, well, I don't wanna say that. Let, let me just retract that statement. Forget I started to say that, okay? Um, but what it does is they have this gas gland that fills the swim bladder with gas. The gas is typically an oxygen. Um, if it's usually oxygen, uh, not an oxygen. It's usually oxygen. Or, or a form of oxygen. Um, there are a few special deep sea fish that will fill it with a, um, a hydrogen or even a nitrogen, but for the most part, they're gonna fill it up with oxygen. Uh, but what it does is it helps the fish stay stationary in the water without using its fins to tread water, all right? Then you have light producing organs. Uh, these enable uh, certain fish to glow in the ocean depths. Uh, think of the, uh, uh, there are certain uh, krill that are bioluminescent. They have the ability to glow. Uh, there are other animals, uh, other fish that have the ability to glow in the dark, all right? And then you have um, electric electricity generating organs. 
These enable certain fish to release an electric current that stuns or kills an enemy or prey. The electric e eel is the best example of this, okay? Um, they can shock the water around them to kill their prey, uh, and then they can swallow it whole from there. All right, so that's where we're going to stop with the internal structures of a bony fish. Uh, the next video that I do, we're going to pick up with cartilaginous fish. Uh, let, again, let me encourage you to keep up with your class notes, okay? I am going to be checking those for a quiz grade. You don't want to fall behind on them. I will be sending out assignments based on your quiz notes. So again, don't fall, uh, based on your quiz notes, based on your uh, class notes. So don't fall behind on them. Keep up with them. Pause the videos if you need to, to get them down, all right? Don't forget something. Don't rush and miss something because you think you don't have the chance to go back. You can go back and watch the video and get all of the class notes. I hope you guys are doing all right. I miss you. Hopefully we won't have to teach like this forever. Uh, we'll be able to interact, we'll be able to do some dissections and uh, finish the school year out strong. Uh, I'm praying for y'all. I hope you guys have a good day.